it's very rare that I make a build that does all the content and somehow still works fine in hologram masters. Uh, I can't do this yet. <laughs> this build is one of them. Well, technically, it's not my build; it's Ruru's build. It's our build. Anyway, I'm just gonna do hologram masters and uh, then briefly talk about what makes Molten Strike really strong and the uh, things you need to watch out for when you are making a Molten Strike character. My spirit is spent. So, all the particle effects from uh, the MTX on these guys are actually lagging my system. Surprisingly, I might be able to actually run this pretty consistently. Wow. I'm not sure how this fares versus Purify Rod's points that uh, best yet. But I haven't seen him yet. That would be a very interesting fight. I can't do this just yet. <laughs> I'm not sure how much it costs to get a price. Okay. Oh, 
Okay. <laughs> this is very inconsistent to the uh, whole grandmasters. I might have just found these actually. Uh, mostly for the mirror card, but we'll see how. Anyway, let's go a bit in scaling a mono strike and why it's super strong, and why also many people don't know how 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 strong it is because they build it wrong, right? So everything I've, I'm telling you right now, it's I'm not something I figured out for myself. I've spent a lot of time on Rutu's stream and uh, I've asked him questions. So uh, unfortunately, he himself doesn't do videos. So hopefully this helps, right? So Moon Strike uh, seems to like, if you look at it, it, it seems to be like a pretty meh kind of skill. Uh, it used to be really strong uh, previously in the past. Uh, and it's kind of laid, stayed under the radar for a long, long while because uh, Whenever you look at it, you're like, oh, it doesn't seem to do a lot of damage. If I put it into a POB, uh, POB says it does like 7, 8 mil, which is, you know, pitiful. And, and it's true, because even in my POB right now, if you look at my motor strike, my projectile is hit for like 7, 6, 7 million. And, uh, and, and like the melee hit hits for like maybe 11 at most. So it looks like a 20 million DPS build. But that's actually the thing about Molten Strike. It's, it's kind of deceptive. You think that the damage is low, but it actually isn't. And the reason being is that Molten Strike actually shotguns. So what does it mean that shotgun? So when a Molten Strike, when you hit any target, uh, you produce 11 projectiles that start from the target and land around them, right? And these 11 projectiles all have its own AoE, and that AoE can overlap. So what that means is, in certain circum circumstances and conditions, all 11 projectiles will hit your target. And if each individual projectile does about 7 million damage, you're doing 7 times 11 7 million times 11 damage. So you're doing 77 million damage just from the projectiles itself. But then you add on the melee component, which is 11, you're doing about 80 million damage. So that's the reason why uh, you, if you see all my showcase videos, I look like I'm melting stuff. And if you go to POB and the, it looks like damage is not, it, it doesn't look like a lot of damage. And the reason being is just because this is uh, something about Molten Strike that not many people have figured out or, you know, it's not something that's commonly known. Right. Oh, turn off the 8x. Okay. Anyway, uh, so I'm not playing 8x for that. Uh, anyway, so uh, the reason being or uh, why Molten Strike is really really strong as well is that with the addition of the extra additional nearby target strike skills uh, gloves and being able to target two additional uh, enemies you increase the amount of overlapping shotguns right so if you saw in the hologram masters when let's say multiple exiles are clustered together they instantly melt and get bursted because you're producing 11 balls on each individual target and they are all overlapping so it's quite possible, especially if the targets are small enough to stand, be standing right next to each other, that you're probably hitting a single target uh, when there's like two strike targets with maybe 20 balls around there, maybe about 18, 18, 20 balls. So if you look at 18, 20 balls, it's like 140 million damage, something like that. So you can understand why uh, this skill does a lot of damage in certain circumstances, uh, especially in cases like, for example, uh, elder and shaper maps where they spawn the other boss on the last uh, on the last phase or when they're born 25 percent health it also explains why when you go and see my videos where i showcase let's say you're doing all the elder shaper uh, elder guardian maps uh, shape shaper guardian maps and the elder slayer maps uh not maps invites on maven uh when all of them get released at the same time and they all start to attack me they they just die they just like get melted and the, the guy that's remaining is gonna take end up taking more damage like to longer the kill just because there's not a lot or there's less shotgun right so that's the reason why mono strike uh is kind of strong so the next portion and the next thing you should be asking is like how do you get these 11 projectiles to shotgun right like how do you uh you know ensure that all these projectiles hit the same exact target and this is where a lot of people don't build uh, correctly, right? And I also kind of didn't really understand this until I you know, asked Rutu about it. So uh, the overlaps actually come from uh, reduced projectile speed and less projectile speed. And the reason being is this, right? So projectile speed governs how far these balls travel from the point of, uh, you know, where they come up from, which is the source, right? The the thing you're hitting. 
So when you hit them, and they let's say you have a lot of projectile speed, they fly out further. Right? And when they fly out further, uh, the likelihood that they will actually land together at the same spot is extremely low, which means you will not hit the target you're hitting uh, with your melee attack with all the projectiles. But if you add on some stuff like a uh, slow projectile spot, uh, a slow projectile spot, which is like 30% less projectile speed, and then you add on uh, these new uh, masteries, which are extremely helpful with Mono Strike, 15% less projectile speed, 10% reduced projectile speed, and another 10% reduced projectile speed. So this is 20% reduced projectile speed, 15 less projectile speed, 30% less. So there's 45% less projectile speed on top of 20% uh, reduced. And I'm pretty sure the reduced and uh, less are uh, multiplicative for one another. It's not additive, right? So this is a multiplicative uh, effect, uh, and this is uh, its own additive effect with itself. But there are not uh, there are not many sources of less project or uh, reduced projectile speed. Sorry, like I think these are the only two reduced projectile speeds uh, that you can get in the game. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So with this, you actually shotgun uh, on medium sized targets. I think about all eleven balls, and about the really tiny targets, maybe about eight, right? But that's generally how you like make your multi strike do a crap ton of damage, um, and and yeah, so that's that's multi strike. So if you're trying to build a multi strike character, uh, do take note that you want the things that help you increase your damage are, uh, and obviously additional projectiles because it is a straight multiplier, and then uh, anything that reduces the projectile speed so that the projectiles hit uh, the location at which uh, they are coming from, right. So that would be slow projectile support and all these, uh, this mastery here. This less projectile speed mastery and these reduce projectile speed nodes. Do not, as I, and I repeat this again, do not get increased projectile speed. Which is here and here. Do not get these things. Because by, when you increase your projectile speed, you basically uh, let the ball spread out even further more because they travel a further distance. And then you don't get a shotgun. So that, that is something you should avoid uh, with Molten Strike. With that being said, uh, this build, let's go into the build specifically, right? So now that you know, understand like Molten Strike mechanics, let's go talk about uh, the build itself. So this build scales uh, Molten Strike damage through Paradoxica. So Paradoxica is a unique sword, it drops from Syndicate. And what this does, this what this sword does is that uh, it does double damage, right? And you know the the sword itself. When you look at the physical damage of the sword, it's it's pitiful. It's non-existent. But the reason why this sword can do a lot of damage is basically it takes all the damage you deal, like every like damage from let's say for example you get flat damage from rings, from your gloves, uh, from auras, it will double it, right? And and that's kind of why uh, this is pretty OP. And and why it works so well with champion is because champion uh, has a lot of ways to scale uh, aura effect. So champion, his ascendancy alone gives thirty percent increased effect of non-cus auras on your skills, and a lot of non-cus auras give you flat damage, flat elementals in particular. So for example, anger gives you a pretty sizable amount of flat uh, fire, a uh, smite gives you a pretty sizable amount of flat lightning, and rough rough is here, gives you a pretty sizable amount of flat lightning as well. And if you have Mantra of Flames, which scales with the number of buffs you have on, and Auras count as buffs, by the way, uh, you also get a pretty large amount of uh, added flat. So that being said, that's the kind of the reason why you scale a lot of uh, flat damage from your Molten Strike. So if you look at your Molten Strike right now, here this is only with Wrath up. So if I add on a Anger, this is with Divine Blessing. You can see the damage goes up pretty significantly. I mean, of course, adrenaline is just propped, but yeah, and just mainly because all the damage that you're dealing comes from your auras, and which is then multiplied by your paradoxica, and then multiplied further by the insane multiplication that comes from multi strike, uh, the projectile shotgun, right? So that's where all your damage is coming from. Okay, that being said, let's move on. Uh, the way you scale this uh, build is through two, two ways. You want to scale aura effectiveness, you want to scale aura reservation because you can then slot in as many, as many auras as you want possible. Uh, and then uh, you want to scale 
just raw stats. Because you're actually relying on the scenes to then do uh, elemental penetration. Uh, and right now I have about 20k omniscience. Oh, not 20k, is it? 2k omniscience. And that is about 220, uh, about 200 pen. And then I add on the pen from Trinity. I add on the pen from the sword, which is 16, as well as the pen from this node, Forces of Nature. And you can hit like about close to 240 pen. Which is insane, right? That's why, you know, Hall Grandmasters, everything dies and melts. Because you're basically treating their resistors like negative. Uh, yeah. And then you do the same thing for bosses, right? So that that's the last insane multiplier when it comes to your damage. So why do you want to scale Aura Effect? The reason why you want to scale Aura Effect is because as a champ, you're going to have a sizable amount of armor and evasion, which you can then add on as percentage damage through Perseverance, right? So Perseverance gives you 1% increased attack damage per turn of the lowest armor and evasion rating. So with Flask, so I have my Flask here, and if I put all my Flask, I get about 90, 85, 87k for both, right? Uh, okay, 80, 87, yeah, for both, for, for both. So that gives a sizable amount of uh, percentage damage increase, right? So you don't really need percentage damage from anywhere else, right? You're getting so much of it just from your Perseverance alone. And then... Uh, while you scale the auras that scale your grace and, and uh, determination and, and scale your armor and evasion rating, you're also scaling uh, with the defiance banner. Yeah, you're scaling your defiance banner as well. And not only are you scaling your defiance banner, you are also scaling uh, the flat damage that goes into the build. So you're talking about wrath, you're talking about anger, and you're talking about smite. So that's the reason why the damage of this build is insane. Uh, you just have like everything scaling off a few key stats, right? Which is aura effectiveness, uh, and the uh, you know, uh, raw stats. Right. And so like because when you're going for aura effectiveness, right, you kind of have the path everywhere on the tree. So you're going, uh, you're going here to get uh charisma, and you want to go here to get uh, influence because down here you get like twenty percent aura effectiveness. Down here you get like uh. Yeah, how much is this? Well, this is more for reservation, but this is like uh, yeah, this is six percent, and then with the notables like twenty. So yeah, so it's like forty percent here, and then from your Tennessee study, so like seventy percent, you get a huge amount of our effectiveness like this. And at the same time, because you're passing through all of these travel nodes, you're getting a whole bunch of stats, right? So these this is all dexterity that you're uh, then converting the omniscience, omniscience which gives you pen, gives you resistances and makes you uh yeah gives you a crap ton of damage yeah so i'm going to show you the path thing you're going to go up here you're going to go to these nodes because it gives you armor evasion and life you go out here you want the sockets you really socket stuff if, if i could have more sockets that'd be nice but you know uh unfortunately i, I don't so I, I had to drop i think brutal fervor uh the brutal fervor, fervor jewels that i was running i was running earlier you want to pass through here because this gives you onslaught effect also, effect is nice because you're already getting free onslaught from the belt, uh, and this gives you as well as onslaught. It gives you armor and evasion, which scales your determination, and grace, uh, and perseverance percentage damage, uh, scaling even further. You want the five percent evasion rating as extra armor because that will help you balance it out. On average, you would see, I would say that most of the time you're gonna have more evasion than you do have armor. I think, so this helps. So you path down here. You want these notes just because this gives you culling. And culling for marked enemies is a 10% more damage. Uh, you also want the mark mastery for gain frenzy charge when you hit a marked enemy because that gives you max frenzy charges. And the reason why this gives you max frenzy charges is because when you hit 11 balls on the target and there's so much overlap, you're gonna get frenzy charges uh, like instantaneously. Right, against bosses, you're just gonna get frenzy charges right, like on almost on every hit. So this is why this is like super cool. So you get the cluster jewel socket here, and then you get the cluster jewels. I would suggest getting one with blood scent and uh, fuel the fight. So fuel the fight is for uh, mana leech, and uh, blood scent is for rage. So rage gives you one percent uh, increased attack damage. So that's fifty percent total attack damage, twenty five percent total attack speed, and uh, the ten percent total movement speed, which is pretty nice. Uh, I have socketed in here a melding of the flesh. Uh, cobalt jewel i will go into that briefly later uh for now just know that you don't really need this it's very end game kind of scaling for this build 
and it's just to give you a huge amount of uh, defenses. So even though my life is like 3.6 as opposed to 4k previously, I now have like 88% to all resistances, which makes me super, super tanky. And down here, I have a small cluster. Okay, this small cluster is pretty uh, deceptive. Uh, I don't think, I think it's good, but I don't think it's worth the amount uh, it's currently in, in the market. I, I bought many of these at around eight exalts uh, and then I crafted lifetime by, by harvest. Uh, you, what I would look for is I'll look for like T1, T2 uh, attribute stats and increase effectiveness. So what this small clusters do is that it gives you uh, a total of 8% uh, mana reservation efficiency of skills and about 30 plus stats, right? If you get T1, T1s, it will be a total of 36 per, uh, per node allocated. But since I have T1, T2s, this is 32. Which is not that much of a difference. It's like four difference, right? So I'm pretty okay with that. But if you look at it, right, each individual point you're adding here gives you eight percent mana reservation efficiency, which is crazy, and thirty two percent, uh, thirty two uh, attributes, which goes to your omniscience, right? So this is a crazy amount of stats, and, and it's like super value. But at the same time, I'm not too sure of whether or not I want to suggest this because these clusters are generally harder to get. Uh, you can roll for it, definitely, but. At the same time, I don't want this shit to be price fixed, right? And yeah. Then you go here, you have point blank. This gives you uh, more damage for your projectiles. You know, all your shotgun projectiles are obviously projectiles, so you do 30% more damage. Uh, and since you but they barely move in distance, in travel distance, they, they always do 30% more. You go here because you want the dexterity nodes. You definitely want these because of omniscience as well. Uh, plus 5 to strength for allocated mastery is best if you have a lot of masteries allocated, which I do. You want th these reduced projectile speed uh, nodes as well, as I mentioned. So down here, you will get the uh, crit chance uh, for projectiles and crit uh, damage for projectile, uh, crit multi for projectiles. Uh, this is nice as well. You do want the mastery that gives you less projectile speed. Since I'm going swords and paradoxicals, I will get this because Fatal Blade is like the best sword node uh, on the entire passive tree. Uh, and if you see here, I'm going uh, Swap Mastery to give Critical Strike Chance with Reduced Critical Multi. And the reason why I'm doing this is that I'm not I'm not Scaling Brittle, right? So if you are Scaling Brittle and you're using uh, Interrogation and Secrets of Suffering, you do not need this, right? But I figured that I'm not going to go that route because I want my Temple Glove. Uh, I want my Temple Gloves uh, to work uh, without having to run Scatter Bots. And I also want to have uh, the Reservation Clusters uh, in my, you know, in here, yeah, so I, I I don't want I don't can't afford to spare these slots. So you definitely want the life nodes here. These these are very good value life nodes, uh, and also because these nodes are in proximity of your brutal restraint time jewel. Okay, uh, let me briefly explain why the brutal restraint time jewel jewel here is insane, uh, and it's insane for the main reason that there are so many notables you can uh, you can uh that you can get here, uh just by manually pathing. In this case, I have the life. Uh, notable here, which gives me 5% increased dexterity. I have the uh, accuracy one here, which also gives me 5% increased dexterity. Uh, and then I'm gone here for uh, cap spell suppression. And this gives me Alchemist Genius. And Alchemist Genius is pretty nuts because it gives me increased fast gain by 20%. Nice, because it, it works very well with Flagellant. And also, it gives me effect of flask by 10%, which is nice as well because my flask gives me armor and evasion. Uh, so this is a pretty nice uh, note to have, uh, and yeah, so this is why you want your uh, Brutal Restraint to be here. Uh, you can also have it here, for example, but you notice I never puffed here. Uh, but I would generally prefer here for the reason that the massive Thread of Hopes are insane for this build. Right, it's insane for any LE build, by the way. Any any build that does uh, LE damage, any build that wants Omniscience, you want this. You want this here, right? And I'll show you why. Um, let me continue the pathing. So down here, you go back to the cluster, the next cluster jewel socket, and then you get martial prowess and feed the fury. And you want feed the fury just because you get life leech here, and then you get uh, mana leech from your uh, is it field of life. Uh, martial prowess is good as well for you, mainly because you need the accuracy because omniscience takes away the accuracy you get from dexterity. Right. So this is next. As mentioned, this is just multiple copies of the same exact cluster jewel I have here. 
Uh, some of them have the same exact crappy life roll. This one has a nice life roll. This one, this one is nine, right? But th it's thirty-two in stats per point allocated here, and uh, eight percent reservation per point allocated here. So that's pretty nuts. So you path down here, all the way down here. You notice I didn't get these. I would if I had more points, but I don't. So yeah, that's unfortunate. So I path down here. I get uh, the socket here, and then I get the uh, or uh, notables here. The aura notables here are, uh, you know, crucial. But the insane one is this thread of hope, and the massive ring basically covers like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine notables. Uh, nine important notables, right? You could get these ones as well, but they're not that crucial for you. Yeah. So, but because you have all these crazy, insane notables. Uh, and some of them overlap with your uh, brutal restraint is it is probably the best uh, jewel that you can possibly invest in for this build so do get one uh i have allocated force of nature which is 10 percent ellie pen uh ellie pen is amazing whether or not you have 250 of it already adding 10 percent more is like another three or four percent more damage uh, Aspect of the Links is nice only because I have attack damage. It gives me attack damage and crit chance, but it also gives me projectile damage. So this gives me like 40% damage and 20% uh, critical chance. This is the only reason why I'm adding it. If you don't get that on your Burrow Strain, your Burrow Strain gives you crappy, uh, you know, a crappy uh, stat on this, you don't have to add this. Weapon Artistry is the same exact reason because 8% increased attack speed and 5% increased dexterity is nuts. So, I mean, I do have a pretty nice uh, Burrow Strange Roll. This gives me 15% dexterity and Alchemist Genius. But yeah, so uh, what what other uh, mod you would like on your Burrow Strange is actually 8% uh, effect on non curse Auras. If you can get 8% on non curse effect on non curse Auras, I think it's better than 5% dexterity. But unfortunately, I didn't get one that had you know all these, so whatever, it's fine. Uh, you want this finesse because it gives you dexterity. You know, dexterity is great because of missions. Attack speed is great as well because it's just more damage, and you need accuracy anyway, just because you know you have omniscience and you don't have the accuracy of dex. I would have gone this as well uh, because it gives dexterity and accuracy, but I think my accuracy is fine as, uh, right now at the moment. Uh, I don't the projectile damage is sweet as well, but I just ran out of points. Right, if if I had points, I'll be adding this, I'll be adding uh, leadership, but I don't. So uh, whatever. <laughs> You obviously want more reservation efficiency, so I've got gotten these. Uh, I'll explain to you why I've gone so much into reservation efficiency, but not everyone, like, like you don't have to, co uh, to copy in this way. You can actually probably drop one major aura or so, uh, and you don't have to do what I have done exactly. But yeah, if you go here as well, you have Blood Siphon. Why, blood, why is Blood Siphon amazing? 10% maximum life and 20 strength, and the 20 strength goes to your omniscience, right? Down here you have 8% uh, attack speed and 30% uh, increased damage. Also pretty, uh, what is it? 20% uh, increased damage. So that's amazing as well. All right. So you pop down here, you get the life nodes. This is a total of 16% for two, that's pretty nice. 10% uh, maximum life to reduce recovery, that's also nice for uh, more life. My life is pretty low as it is. I have my watcher's eye here. My watcher's eye is pretty insane. I would say that uh, most of you probably want to get this watcher's eye, so you know don't don't fret about it. Uh, but what you're looking for is mostly a crit multi, well affected by anger. If you don't get that, you can go probably get a crit chance with wrath. That's fine too. Uh, or attack speed with precision. That's also really nice. Uh, you can also go a defensive watcher's eye, like reduce critical damage taken uh, with determination. That is also really nice. But what is mandatory is the life gain on hit, well affected by the attack. Because if you don't have this, uh, you will have to run a Brutal Fervor Jewel, which I think is considerably more expensive. So why is the life gain on hit good? The reason being, you are shotgunning, right? If 11 projectiles hit, you're going to get 29 life times 11, which is pretty sizable per hit. So that's the reason why you want to get that life gain on hit. You must get life gain on hit. Uh, you don't need critical multi, you don't need the discipline, and you don't need Anything else, just life can hit, and you should be fine. Uh, then you puff here. Okay, Ghost Dance. Ghost Dance is not mandatory. It's okay, it's not, it's kind of mandatory. If you do have a 
uh, Gravicus Craft, which is 10% of maximum life as extra maximum energy shield, then yes, uh, this is going to be extremely helpful, especially if you're just starting out and you're going to have like maybe 5k life on average. I've dropped it to 3k because I'm I've added in discipline, right? If I didn't add in discipline, I wouldn't be dropping I wouldn't be dropping life this low. Yeah, but you know this is amazing because you have a pretty sizable amount of uh, evasion. So you have like 60k evasion, and with 60k evasion, uh, ghost dance is gonna send you send your <laughs> your energy shield back to full every time it procs. Right. So if half here as well, you get the uh, life and energy shield nodes, and it gives you 10 strength, which is good foundations, right? And then you go here, and you get the last aura reservation uh, set of notables. Uh, you go for aura's uh, aura effect and mana reservation efficiency. Okay, when it comes to gear, uh, I can't really tell you what budget gear is because I've already moved away from my gear being budget. Uh, I can show you what it is right now, but it's mostly just a flex on you kind of thing. I don't think it's helpful for you to understand. Uh, I do want to point out on certain aspects of my gear that you may not be able to replicate, and because you're not able to replicate it, then your building is going to be a lot different. So I'll give you an example. You are definitely going to go paradoxical. If you don't go paradoxical, you lose a bit, a huge, huge bunch of damage. So that is without question, you will go for it. Whether or not you get the Ellie pen, is you know up for grabs. You might not be able to get the Ellie pen, but that's fine. I think as long as you get the attack speed with the Dex and intelligence, I think your uh, paradoxical is cool. So just get that mod, right? You don't really need the Ellie pen. Okay, so that that's just one thing. Uh, helmet, you all you hundred percent want a black sun crest. And the Black Sun Crest is crazy because of the amount of omniscience it gives you. So let me show you what happens when I drop Black Sun Crest. So this is 2000. I drop it by 500. <laughs> I lose almost uh, you know, a quarter of all my omniscience just because I don't have a Black Sun Crest. So Black Sun Crest is essential for this uh, build. Whether or not you're scaling in the way I am, you will definitely want to get it. Obviously, the best enchant on it is Lone Strike fires two additional projectiles. Right now, you probably get these for cheap, mainly because I don't think a lot of people are playing Lone Strike. Uh, Lone Strike, sorry, yeah, Lone Strike. And uh, so yeah, please, if you can buy this from the market and get it early, great. Uh, if you can't, it's fine because no one's trying, no one's buying, no one's hiring people to to get this uh, enchant. So if you get a lab runner to do it for you, it's two exalts max. So you buy the base, which is like a well-rolled increased strength, dexterity, intelligence, maybe about 13% at least for each. And, and then you, you pay a 2x extra on that to get the enchant. Okay, so... Now obviously, Omniscience is amazing. If you're playing this build, you must go Omniscience. Uh, if you're not going Omniscience, that's fine. Uh, I can show you how I scaled my character before I bought my omniscience. I only bought my omniscience like maybe five days ago. Uh, but yeah, this gives you so much damage, so much resistance, allows you to have melting of the flesh. And uh, in this case, you notice uh, the corruption I have here is priority of fire. And the reason why I've done this is I want uh, melting of the flesh. So priority of fire at level 23 gives you 5% uh, max res for fire. And uh, because of your RF effectiveness, this goes up to 10, I think. So you get 10 max rest total. Uh, and the reason why I want it on the corruption is because I have no more slots. There's no way I was going to squeeze in a uh, purity of fire. So beforehand, I had just had like 4k, 5k life. And I didn't have, uh, or I had 4.5k life and I didn't have uh, a melting of flesh. The moment I got melting of flesh, I can drop life because I don't need as much of it. Right, I'm relying on my recovery and my reduction in order to stay alive. Right, so yeah, whether or not you build a fine one that has a purity uh, skill, I, I would say it's uh, subjective. It, these are pretty hard to find. I got mine cheap mainly because this guy is not. No one knows that this build exists uh, at 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 a point. So this guy was selling it for like below uh, the cheapest on missions, and no one was buying it. By the way, that was the worst part. So. I bought this for 50 exalts and I sold my one for 56 or 57. Yeah, so I, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, for shield, I would suggest uh, getting a shield that has a socketed reduced mana reservation. Uh, I don't have it right now because I moved all my gems to uh, my aura gems to my helm. And the reason why I moved my aura gems to my helm is that my helm, I managed to buy one that had uh, plus three to 
gem levels. So I have plus three on my discipline, my grace, my wrath, and my determination. Otherwise, I would have my 50% auras and the shield with the uh, reduced reservation. So what you want in your shield is mainly defenses. You want spell suppression, uh, because you don't have it on helm anymore because you're using uh, Black Sun. Uh, you want a uh, reduced extra damage from critical strikes because critical strikes are extremely rippy. The, one of the main way, ways people die. Uh, so, yes, do try to get that as much as possible. And the most important and crucial part is the maximum fire resistance, all core resistance, all lightning, lightning resistance. So, what you want here is that you want uh, either a tree to fire, coal, or lightning. And you can always use Harvest Craft to change it from coal to lightning or coal to fire etc. Alright, so that means whatever purity uh, in the skill you have, whether it be uh, liar, fire, 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 lightning, or uh, was it ice, you can, always, or you can always change it. So it's not a problem, right? So that's what you want for your shoe. For your rings, you just generally want uh, accuracy, I would feel. So you want accuracy, uh, you want attributes, you want life. Increased elemental damage with attacks is a luxury. If you can get it, that's great. But I would say that if this this ring right now, on an amethyst base, is like 40 exalts. So, uh, if you skip the elemental damage per attack, it's maybe uh, 10 exalts or 8 exalts. Uh, and you can probably craft it yourself, which is very cheap. All you need to do is buy a uh, T1 uh, suffixes base, which has strength, dexterity, intelligence, uh, or, or accuracy. And then you uh, suffixes can't be changed. Uh, use a veil or block mana to get uh, to, to try to land the life, and then you just craft on the non-channing skills have uh, minus seven the total mana cost. So you just skip the increased elemental damage, and yeah, it should be fine. I have two of the same rings, uh, except one of them. Has, this one has T two uh, intelligence instead of uh, T one intelligence, and uh, this has non. Uh, it is not a veil mod for the life, but the life is higher because it's not a veil. Okay, chess. Grasping mail is insane. Uh, and the reason why it's insane is that global defenses boost your determination. It boosts your grace. And if uh, you're like me and you're, 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 you, and you have that insane watch's eye, you go discipline as well. So the, this scales all three of my uh, defensive auras. It scales my discipline, it scales my grace, and it scales my determination. So that's why the 100% global defenses is crazy. Uh, and the reason why it's crazy as well is that when it's fractured, uh, it's very easy to craft. So what you do is you would use a uh, essence for the increased mass reservation reservation efficiency, and you try to roll T1 spell suppression, and ideally a T1 uh, stat. In this case, I didn't roll a T1 stat. I, I got like 36 decks, and I was like too lazy, so uh, I didn't like try to get what 15 extra attributes. I mean, I don't care about it, but whatever. Uh, it doesn't look perfect. Uh, but once you get the suffixes uh, solved, you just uh, suffixes can't be changed, or you know, uh, reforge keep suffixes just to clear out the prefixes, right? So that leaves only the global defenses, which is fractured. Because it's fractured, it cannot be removed. And what you do is you use uh, eldritch orbs, uh, eldritch exalt orbs, and anal orbs, and chaos orbs to get a T1 life. So once you get a T1 life there and an empty prefix slot. You put in the maximum life as maximum energy shield, and your chest is done, right? Uh, I got the grasping mill really early, at about fifty exalts. I think right now, if you were to pay for it, it's hundred plus. You don't have to get that. The hundred percent global defenses is a luxury. You don't need it, right? Try to get a uh, chest with life, uh, the gravitas mod, mana reservation and efficiency, spell suppression, and stats, right? And maybe like some. Evasion and armor, right? So, it comes to my gloves. Uh, this glove is insane. You will not be able to get it. I don't think so. Uh, it has a power and triple temple one. Yeah. I, because I don't think you'll be able to get this, I would suggest that you go for triple attribute or double attribute accuracy gloves. And that should be enough, right? And when you go for a glove like that, it also means that you can go. Uh, the interrogation and get secrets of suffering and scale brittle. The reason why I did scale brittle is because I have this, right? And this gives me, it's like, look at the flat damage. 49 to 77 is crazy because it goes to your paradox, I uh, explained it previously, right? And then you have crit chance, about 60% crit chance and 50% increased damage with it. And you get like 
crap down resistors, right? Which you help, which helps with your melting. So right now, uh, you know, if I didn't have these gloves, I would have gone below uh, my my cap. Yeah, the yeah, power is nice as well. Uh, I'm using it with my anger, but as I, I don't think you'll be able to get this glove. Then what's more, most important for your gloves is that you roll strike skills, target one additional nearby enemies initially, and then subsequently try to upgrade it with an Ombud Conflict to two additional nearby enemies. You want spell suppression on the gloves because you obviously are not getting it on your boots and your helm, so that's it. Your belt is always going to be a perseverance, right? Uh, you don't have to get a double corruption like mine, uh, you don't have to get an enchanted one like mine, but do get a perseverance at least. And make sure it gets like pretty high amount of life because you know, you're know gonna be life starved. Your pro rest is not as important as your munitions, so whatever. Okay, for boots, finally, uh, I crafted these myself. It cost me, I think, 20 exalts. Uh, plus, plus, 20 exalts, I think. Uh, I got it with two fractured uh, mods, so dexterity and life. So what you want for this personally uh, is you want attributes, movement speed, life, and that's pretty much about it. But I was kind of greedy because I really wanted to move the Pantheon. So I, I was originally Soul of Ranking, which I think I would suggest for everyone. You should go Soul of Ranking. Uh, but when you get a glove or a boot like this, you can move to this, uh, which is Soul of Arakali. And the reason why you want Soul of Arakali is uh, the thing that kills you the most is actually damage over time. So this helps quite a bit. And it helps deal with the lack of chaos rest that you, you'd have for DOTs. Yeah, so how do you craft a boot like this? Uh, you want a life fractured and attribute fractured. And the reason being is that you can then use SSS, uh, chaos instances to uh, roll for the chaos rest, rest, the T1 chaos rest, and the uh, T1 uh, attribute, other attribute roll, so strength, uh, dex, or int. And then with that, uh, you can. Suffixes cannot be changed uh, and use a veil mod to get on the increased movement speed and cannot be choked. Uh, and then you craft on the cannot be frozen as your last step. And that basically gives you a boot that means you know makes you immune to chilling and immune to freezing. Uh, and then you can just skip this entirely. For your flask, you definitely want a flagellant flask for all your 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 magic flask. So you want Sergeant Flask because that's the only way to get your Flask uh, permanently up, especially during maps. Uh, you always want a Granite and you always want a Jade. Uh, you can go, I, I mean I went a Diamond here because I don't have uh, brittle, brittle, I don't have uh, Secrets of Suffering. So this is the only way for me to get like good crit. Uh, but you can also go like a Topaz, a, a Sapphire or a Ruby Flask. Uh, I've gone an Amethyst Flask as well just because my Chaos Res is not exactly high. So right now my chaos rest is at 21% and with this is 30 50% uh, uh, was it 50? 60% so that's the only reason why I have this flask. Uh, bottle face is nice for me because I, I don't have good base crit anyway so yeah. But you can probably run a life flask here. I usually run a life flask here on uber bosses just because I want some form of uh, additional recovery that doesn't require me to hit anything. Okay, I will close out this video for now. I'll probably do a leveling guide as a separate video just because this video is probably like about 40 minutes long uh, and I don't want to just drag it on further. Alright, peace. I'm going to make the other video like maybe in about 20 minutes or so. I need to catch, some, catch a breath and drink some water. Bye.